So the next functionality we're going to talk about is Ready Vault with object storage. This is absolutely exciting. Everything that you saw on block storage, this is my personal opinion that in another two years, all of this is going to change and everything will happen on object storage. Because as more and more applications go live in the cloud, go native in the cloud, there's more and more usage of object storage. All of this has to happen on object storage. So um, now let's see how can we use this today. So this is typically how ActiveView works in a typical primary side, DR side environment. You have ActiveView, takes the data, replicates it, and you're doing DR on the, at the second side. Now that, that DR side could be AWS as well. Um, now let's understand how somebody can completely eliminate tapes. Right? So that's one problem. Second problem is somebody might be pouring in millions of dollars into those massive deduplication appliances because of the fact that they had seven year retention. It's not uncommon actually to see that for a 20 terabyte for data protection, if you have seven year needs, you might end up buying those 128 terabyte appliances from you know who, right? Expensive appliances, you want to replace them. So uh, um, this is a good solution to replace both those expensive UDP appliances as well as tapes. And the way you do this is very simple actually. You come to Actifio and you specify an Amazon account or a Google Nearline account, right? And that's simple. Once you specify the account, what Actifio does is, within Actifio you can go and set up an SLA, just like you set up an SLA as to how often you want to back up, where do you want to store, how often do you want to replicate, how, uh, you know, how do you want to recover, etc. This is just another checkbox where you want to say, Okay, take the data and put it into, into a vault, you know, active vault in object storage. And once you do that, what Actifio does is it takes the data, native data, not the deduplicated data, native data, and compresses it and sends it to the object storage. It stores it encrypted, transports it encrypted, um, so, so data is safe and secure. But the key thing is that we are picking the data from snap snapshot pool, which means that the data is in its native format. And I'll explain to you the reasons why we chose to go native and store it in object storage. Um, and of course, we have multiple parallel streams that somebody can provision so that they can get the data out as fast as they can, or they can throttle the uh, rate at which the data can go into object storage by reducing the number of streams as well. So that's how data is ingested into um, the active vault, the ready vault object storage. That can be, is that only um, the cloud or can it be S3 on site also? It could be either one. So that's an S3 API that we code to. So it can be, yeah, and, and, and luckily, in, so does everybody else. Yeah. URL to the bucket. Absolutely. And um, so, so that was how we put the data there. Now, again, our differentiation comes, a lot of people put data in object storage. Our differentiation comes in how you access the data in object storage. So now come to think of it, traditional applications have been leveraging block storage, right? And now we took the data and put it in object storage. When they need to access the data, somebody has to convert it back from objects to blocks. Right? And we do that seamlessly. Within Actifio Sky software, what we have done, and our physical appliance as well, what we have done is we have seamlessly translated from block to object and then again object to block. So you will still get that near instant access, even though the data is in object storage. So you can go back to your machine, do an instant mount, and you will start seeing the blocks and the files. Right? So that's our differentiation, which is instant access to data, even though the data is in object storage. And we are also going to do the demonstration, right? Um, so. Okay, and, and while you say native mode, it's you're moving changed blocks per incremental, right? At this point, we are. We are or are you rehydrating? We are, we, at this point, we are taking a full from the snapshot pool and sending it to object storage. Compressed. Okay. Right? We are not doing it in an incremental fashion. We're taking the full image because typically people want to vault data once a month or once a year for the next 15 years, something along those lines, right? So that's why uh, at this point, we're taking the full image, compressing it, and sending it to the... This also permits each one of these objects to be self-describing. Oh, no, it, it, it lets it be self-describing. It speeds up the, rep, the, the reaccess process. But if, I'm, if it's my ERP database and I'm taking monthly snapshot, you know, monthly backups, 90% of that, because it's got seven years of data in it, is the same. And if you were storing incrementals, I would need a much smaller object store. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of cases where the likelihood of retrieval, not even the frequency of retrieval, is low. And I don't care about retrieval time as much yeah. as I care about storage cost. Yeah. I, I, maybe this is the right time to talk about why we chose to 
uh, save it in the, in, in the native format. One of the things that we definitely wanted to do was not only store the data in, in, into this vault for long-term data retention, but we also wanted to provide mechanisms um, and we wanted to act as a bridge so that customers, users can take the data and load it into the analytics engine and do their data warehousing on demand in cloud. That's one, one example. And I want to, full disclosure roadmap, what we also want to see going forward is how can we take this data that's stored in object storage, also leverage that for even for disaster recovery or maybe even for test and dev, right? So that's all future. What you can do right now is store the data, that's the first step, in this object storage in such a way that it can lend itself to those future use cases. So that, that was the driving. <laughs> Now the yeah, second, I, I I want both options. You want both, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, it it, it, it makes sense. It depends on the on the use case. Yeah. You know, there's there's huge <laughs> amounts of retained because I'm legally required to retain, but I hardly ever access. That's right. Where all I care about is reliability and cost. Yeah. And then there's yeah, and you're addressing the other side of it, which is you know I am actually going to have to restore this stuff occasionally, and let's not make that a huge pain in the ass. Yes. <laughs> And, That's right. But, you know, I would love to be able to say, for this application, let it be a pain in the ass, I don't care, and for this application, I want to be able to restore. Yep, I agree. And as you all know, object storage is immutable. Once you store the data, you can't overwrite that data. Yet, what we have done is, when you do the instant mount, we want to offer that instant mount as a rewritable volume. So you still get the rewritable volume. So the way we do this is, all reads obviously comes from the object storage when you read it on demand. Um, but when you write, we are not, we obviously we can't overwrite stuff in object storage. So what we're doing is we are caching the writes, as you can see locally, and then once your test is done, you can discard those caches. So you continue to get that familiar rewritable volume instant access on your machines with ActiveView, even if the data is in object storage. Um, and here is an example of on-demand analytics, right? So you store the data, like uh, one year from today, you want to do some analytics on all the data, um, you know, using Amazon Redshift or any other tools, right? So one of the scenarios is that you basically spin up Actifio. Maybe Actifio is already, already exists um, in AWS. And then what you, you spin up EC2 compute or whatever is the service that you want to leverage in cloud on demand for analytics. And all you need to do is mount the data from this object source <coughs> tool onto those analytics. And that analytics will start reading the data and do whatever and get the analytics done. So what Actifio's value proposition here is make it very simple and act as a bridge from object storage into whatever analytics engine that you're using. So basically, repurpose that same data for multiple use cases, go above and beyond long-term data retention. So, and then once the testing is done, once the analytics is done, you just wipe it off. So everything is on demand, right? So with that, we'll get to the next demo, last demo. Next and final. So I know we're <clears throat> running uh, short on time here. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. So for this last demo, uh, what we're going to do is, is showcase another, uh, Anthony, yep. uh, IP address? Uh, 172. Yeah, 20. there it is, 19 to 28, yep. thank you. Um, so what we're doing here is we're, we're uh, showcasing a, an API portal that we have as well, that we built. This was built for um, a customer proof of concept <laughs> where um, they wanted to, uh, for lack of a better word, restrict or dumb down what someone can do with the platform. They have a very um, robust workflow that, uh, for spinning up test dev instances. They want to plug Actifio in at the, at the right time, and they don't want the, the users to be able to do nine things. They want them to be able to do two or three things uh, in a very specific you know, way that worked in their enterprise with their single sign-on and all that good stuff. So what we've done here is um, this portal showcases our API. So again, this is using RESTful API calls to, to, to do this orchestration. And I'm going to pick this uh, database right here, Big DB AWS, right? Yep. Sure. This is, uh, as Chandra mentioned, this is a database in AWS on an Actifio virtual appliance. I'm gonna put it on SA Demo Lin Aura, and I'm, and I'm gonna hit the button. And, and that's gonna start this job. And somewhere here, I've got a window, should be open. There it is. And so um, what we're doing on this one is, um, presenting the data just like we've been doing with the SQL demo and the Oracle demo. Uh, but what's different about this is this data is coming from uh, object storage. So what we're doing is, is just what Chandra highlighted. We're taking a one, a one terabyte database, is that right? Yeah, just over. Just over a one terabyte uh, Oracle database that's already in object storage in S3, 
in Amazon, I am going to synthesize a read writable volume that the reads come from S3 and the writes go to EBS. And the, and the user sees none of that. The user just sees their database. And so the use case for this is, uh, there's lots of them. One of them is very, very cost effective, uh, uh, you know, test and development perhaps. Analytics, as, as Chandra pointed out, is really what, what, what spurred us to set this demo up is the analytics use case. Uh, could be audit, checking you know, the database from seven years ago, we need to recover something. It's, it's the ability to, to make the data usable without having to, I don't have to move a terabyte of information anywhere. It's only gonna be read on demand, right? As the application or as the user requests the blocks, then we're gonna recall them. Um, so it's a very, very powerful way to let you leverage um, very, very cost-effective object storage, but do things that are a little bit more dynamic, like bring up entire file systems, bring up entire databases. In this case, I'm actually just gonna bring up the, um, the file system um, that, that this object represents and, and let you take a quick look at it. One common question that comes up is, you have data in object storage, I'm gonna store it for the next 15 years, how do I know that the data is right? I mean, wh 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 is the data okay? Is it not corrupted? Is corrupted, not corrupted? So this is a great mechanism to just do an instant mount, maybe bring up the database and do a DBCC checksum to make sure that the data is fine and then tear it away, right? So on demand, you can do data integrity checks as well. You had a question? Yeah, um, performance, I'm, you, you're just redirecting the writes, you're not doing any caching of the read. So if I'm reading off AWS, particularly where I live, and it's on the end of a very long, wet piece of string, um, my performance is gonna pretty much suck. Um, any plans to do some more of the caching of, of frequent reads, or is that not on the? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting idea. Um, you know, our kind of idea with this is we let you pick the infrastructure that performs to what you want to accomplish. So if you want to do something faster, by all means, you can do the exact same thing all on EBS, right? Yeah. Uh, this this use case is I'm willing to give up a little bit of performance to get much cheaper storage costs. Exactly. Yeah. So we kind of let you move that needle where that makes sense to you, but and it makes it doesn't make sense really to restore back to original location back across the internet. But this use case you're doing now, where it's restore into AWS or wherever you've got your, and we can and we can do this on prem as well. So I can do the oh, exact yeah. same demo on prem. Yeah, and bunch, read a bunch of Ceph to do the the S3 on prem as well. Exactly. But I'm just saying I can have Actifio on prem, my data in S3 in the cloud, yeah. just the, the objects, and do this exact same thing. Yeah, so that, I just that, need one row. The, the performance is going to suck. Of course, of course. <laughs> but but I just need one row out of the database. Or I just need one right. file, right? I don't need to recall the whole yeah. thing. Let me just get yeah. what I need. Go ahead, and, sure. And uh, the other thing is, if you're doing it on Amazon, you don't have to pay the Amazon out costs, right? So if you're doing, right. so you, the, the advantage it's is you're not local, you're, you're inside the Amazon yeah. cloud. You're using yeah. their backbone. <clears throat> yeah. uh, and so you do have two options, right? So if you want to just mount and look at a simple file or just look at the contents of the content, then the mount is fine. Like you said, if you really want to run your analytics, high performance analytics on it, you also have the option to clone it, and run it locally. Right. So this has done 1.1 terabytes of used data in this object. I just took the default path, and if I had CD in there, oops. And so if I am accessing data that's in literally Amazon S3, does the Sky Appliance cache? <laughs> we, I, I hear an echo. That question. I hear an echo. No, no, it does not. Not today. <laughs> there you go. There's the, the 1.1 terabyte file system. I'm going to run an LS on it, and what you'll see is, again, it'll take a couple seconds here, and it's going to give you the information. So it's a really, really powerful way to leverage very, very cost-effective storage um, for, for workloads in the cloud or even on-prem. Question? Just not on the technology, but Ash, I wouldn't mind just asking... Um, Activia has been around for a number of years, and I don't think it's too unfair to say that you aren't hugely well known. I appreciate that you're at Techfield Day today to uh, address that, but from what personally I've seen here, that this does look like uh, an excellent solution. What is the plan going forward to try and hopefully sell more of it and get the get the new news out there and try and obviously get more customers to keep you going? Brilliant. Yeah. So I think one will have. Thank you, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> one, I think we'll have more tech field days. That's the lesson number one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and frankly, I think one of the things uh, we've struggled with is you are, you are practitioners, you are technologists, you understand the picture very well. But if I went back to... Uh, you I, said I was, you, you speak to CIOs when you start. Yeah, and they love it. The, for them, the, the, the ability to understand this story is very well. And somebody, I think one of you, you wrote the transformation story of it's harder to sell. We figured out the selling part. We basically say, okay, CIO, uh, Mr. CIO, here's our Mr. CIO, here's, here's a big transformation story. 
Now, can you point to one place that we can start with? The reality is any place. Any, it could be because I, I don't want to buy data domains anymore. I'm, I'm done with that. Can't blame you for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it could be anything, any, anything, any, any starting use case. The problem is being it doesn't fit nicely into a category that people understand. So it took us four years to come up with this no, notion of copy data management, copy data virtualization, and any transformation story uh, requires a few early adopters. And rather than put um, a lot of marketing around around trying to just put the word out, we focused a lot of marketing around just customer adoption. So there's about, like I said, about 1,500 or so users now. Um, but they are, they are the kind of people who finally got it. It took them a little while. Yeah. So, well, now we would have stolen your term, so it'll help. That'll, yeah, that helps. You know, when, when people start saying, you know, copy data is actually a category and we have something, that helps. But I mean, you I, I send Ed a fruit basket. What's that? You should send Ed a fruit basket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ed was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a good friend. Uh, yeah. And so <clears throat> and we've been in the storage industry for all of us. You know, we, we were all. What helps to define a term that is instantly related back to. Yeah, and it took us a while. I mean, people said, are you a storage company? Well, we're not a storage company. Uh, are you a backup company? Well, we're not quite a backup company. Uh, so what are you? So it took us a while. And, and frankly, I think this is our opportunity. In many ways, uh, there are a few driving. Uh, principles for the for the business now. We are about six and a half years old. There's enough critical mass of companies. Uh, the way we sell is, is frankly, you know, we we, we have a, a a knife fight on every street to get through every opportunity because it is a it is a full frontal assault and uh, there is no leverage. I, mean, I don't have a channel partner who knows how to sell copy data virtualization because it's not quite backup. Uh, so the, we we've had our challenges. Uh, we feel like we've we've crossed the tipping point, and we feel like this may be the time to to really get an audience that is different. And to Howard's point, having a few more people, and we we talked to one of the, the well-known analysts who puts magic quadrants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they needed whose name shall not be mentioned at Tech Field Day. And they needed more people in this place. They said, "Well, I can't have a quadrant with just you guys." Um, it'd be nice to have four or five more. And maybe now there are four or five more, and and you will see. Three different approaches. You know, this is the approach we have, which is it is about data management. There'll be the storage guys who'll come back and say, it's just a storage problem. I'll just give you a bigger storage. Scale out big storage, and that should solve your problem. And back to your point, all it does is you know more storage. And then there are these you know, backup software guys who will say, I'm also copy data guys. So I, I don't have a good answer for you on or are we going to do something very dramatically different on our marketing? Um, to, to propagate this. Some of it is just more user adoption. And maybe we'll get some advice from you guys because this is something that <laughs> does require a little more organic. I mean, I saw your blog. I mean, I saw Alistair's blog. I'm like, oh my God, no, this has been five and a half years since we talked to the market. And uh, it's clearly scary, which also tells me that uh, you know, until we show up, nobody probably knows about, knows, knows about us. And uh, even after that, it takes a little while to get through the process. Yeah, so the answer is uh, we just have to try something different. And uh, if, if you have, you know, we, have, we, we know a little and we learn a lot, so uh, appreciate any feedback on really getting the story out.